Welcome to My Therapist is Out, an open space therapy collective podcast. We are your hub for queer and trans mental health care. Each episode, we will speak with one of our therapists or collective members and chat about a mental health topic using a queer lens. And I am your host, Renee Johnson, licensed professional clinical counselor, art therapist, and founder of Open Space Therapy Collective. Today, we're chatting with Debbie White. Debbie White is an art therapist and has practiced in New York and California. Debbie specializes in working with teens and parents who want to support them. Hi. Hi. (laughs) My therapist is out. Welcome to an Open Space Therapy Collective podcast. (laughs) Today we have Debbie White with us and we are talking about trauma response. Mm, What mm. it means, how to know if you're in it, what it looks like, and how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is going to be a heavy one today. Yeah, well, yeah, but we'll keep it light for you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Nothing like talking about trauma and keeping it light, right? It's it's actually, it's a protective mechanism. Absolutely. Right? So... That's our job. We want to make sure that we don't make it too heavy for those because we're natural protectors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So how what how is, to tell. <laughs> how to tell. How to tell if you're in a trauma response. Maybe we should start by kind of explaining what a trauma response is. Because being like triggered versus being in a trauma response versus being in a total like flashback mm-hmm. space can be really different. Like being triggered is, you know, something happens and you're like, fuck, I got to get out of here. It could be something happened. Okay, so triggers can be something that happens. It could be a smell. It could be um, someone wear a particular color, someone just walking up behind you or entering a room and you didn't really realize. So triggers can be small. It could be large um, to very subtle, Mm -hmm. right? Flashbacks. It also can be triggered Mm -hmm. by sense, colors, Mm -hmm. location. Um, But a flashback, you're going to be in a place where you are fully in a feeling like you're kind of in a different time and place and reacting Mm -hmm. pretty dramatically to a different time and place. And so these are kind of like the two ends of kind of these trauma response spectrums. But we're going to talk about today is a little more in the middle. Right. And, you know, I actually had an adolescent who actually went on an outing and they passed by in a hardware store. Mm. Don't want to say the name of the brand, but that's where they were essayed. Mm. And it was a subtle flashback Mm. for them. And trauma response was like it was all internal. Mm -hmm. They did not feel safe to talk about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we know that it doesn't always come outward. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes you have to process it. You can't even tell that you went through it until Mm -hmm. after. Yeah, Yeah, it's not necessarily an acting out. It can often be an acting in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And essayed is a short term for um, a suicide attempt. In in their case, it was sexual assault. Sorry. There we go. Um, we will put a trigger warning at the beginning of this. Yes, this we one. will. Yeah. Um, so maybe let's use an example mm-hmm. as we kind of talk about trauma response. So let's say I'm trying to think of one that's that's not too heavy. Mm. Um, oh, abandonment. Okay, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have abandonment issues, and a lot of times this comes from parents or things that happened in your childhood where you were neglected or you were left or somebody passed away, and that triggers this very um, primal Mm -hmm. part of us. And it's not necessarily that somebody's to blame in these responses either, Mm -hmm. or these happenings. Yeah. I mean, it could be like culturally speaking, like my family's Caribbean. So it's not unheard of in Caribbean families when they migrate to a new country, they will send their babies home to stay with family in their homeland so they can keep working. Mm -hmm. That could still, that child can still develop abandonment issues, even though it was for a good reason. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in that example Mm -hmm. in an abandonment example as an adult Mm -hmm. you're out living your life you've like in your mid-career you've had a few like partners 
um, what what might a trauma response look like? Hmm. So, further this scenario, you're in your life, you're living, whether a close friend or partner leaves you or breaks up with you or you break up with them, you can still end up in a trauma response of depression or feeling like you've been abandoned. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of the symptoms can come across like depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of sinking. Mm -hmm. And also I see a lot of very like um, cyclical thinking mm -hmm. and like obsessive thinking about it, mm -hmm. especially you know, even before you get to a breakup stage, if there was a lot of fighting mm -hmm. um, and or conflict, people can avoid conflict and being avoiding conflict can be part of that trauma response, yep. as well as if there is conflict, then being terrified that the person's gonna leave, mm -hmm. even if it's just, ow, you stepped on my foot, that hurt. Yeah, and then it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy and then you start blaming yourself mm -hmm. like, oh, I did this, I am the root cause, everyone leaves me because you, you ruminate on those thoughts mm -hmm. everyone leaves me because i'm not this i'm not that mm -hmm. and so also let's backtrack abandonment feelings tend to be i'm not worthy i'm not lovable nobody wants me mm -hmm. right that so that's the subconscious thought that mm -hmm. you will always feel sometimes you can't even put it into words but yeah. it's a feeling yeah and then it, it triggers other things mm -hmm. yeah yeah and there can be a lot of feelings that are layered in here too. Mm -hmm. Like I think deep loneliness can be one mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. hard to ever fill. Um, and then self-sabotaging mm -hmm. behaviors, mm -hmm. um, self-medicating, mm -hmm. because maybe you've never been taught to put the words to identify what you're going through, but you just experience mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. trauma response. Yeah, We're gonna wear that word out. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Um, what, so since we're kind of talking about some of the emotional mm -hmm. pieces of what a trauma response could be, and we'll, we'll stick with this abandonment one, because mm -hmm. this is going to look really different depending on the trauma that you've experienced and how you've internalized that and how you kind of use that lens. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've had any prior therapy, like your different stages in therapy, your trauma, your abandonment may not look like someone else's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So some of the emotional things, rumination, mm -hmm. depression, lots of fear, mm -hmm. self-doubt, self-hate. Mm -hmm. um, what about physically? What would you notice? Oh, wow. A lot of tummy issues. Mm. Everything you eat just doesn't agree with you. Um, to aches, body aches joint pains but you'll always say oh i just exerted myself too much or i slept bad or not sleeping mm -hmm. insomnia uh, what else there's irritability yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah there's always something that i think rumination and the the physical responses really go mm -hmm. in hand in hand mm -hmm. is this kind of a closing like your body kind of closes in mm -hmm. and your thoughts kind of close in and you kind of you stopped responding to the world around you and the people that around you are happening because yeah. you're really stuck in this response and you don't even realize it it's a really hard things to realize i'm so glad you said that yes also if you have a close friend that may say to you you know your thinking is so black and white mm. you can't see the gray mm -hmm. because you're in your black or white thinking yes can you say more like what in in the abandonment trauma ah. response what would that black and white thinking okay look so like? based on the belief that you're not worthy you're not lovable nobody wants you it's hard to even recognize when someone does want you mm -hmm. and so someone's treating you well and showing you that they love you and that you are worthy and that you're wanted you will still be like oh but they didn't respond to my text mm -hmm. right away so it reinforced that and you constantly test in mm. the relationship, but it's never thinking, oh, well, maybe he or she or they were busy mm -hmm. doing something. Mm -hmm. It's it's just, I guess it's the best way I can describe yeah, black or white thinking, right? You, you have the inability to see the possibilities of what could have been the reason why they didn't respond to your text or, yeah, and then constantly looking for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, and even if you know that they're probably in a meeting or mm -hmm. whatever's happening, mm -hmm. it the feelings is so overpowering that they hate me. They're not, they're mm -hmm. over this mm -hmm. that it it trumps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the feeling really takes over. It really takes over, and it's beyond being. Don't ever say be rational. It's hard to be rational, 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 if you're in <laughs> if you're in that state. Sorry for the giggle. I was really giggling at the fact that I flubbed the word. Uh, but anyway, so it's hard to be rational um, or don't ever say get over that. Like mm -hmm. it's hard to get over something that it's so ingrained in you. Mm -hmm. So what I like to tell a lot of the clients that identify with abandonment and they're like, well, how can I cure this? And or how can I get over this? Because I tell them, how about let's explore managing mm -hmm. the feelings because I really don't feel or believe, based on what I've read, that is something that you can get over mm. or it's curable. It's like depression, it looks different for everyone and you just manage it mm -hmm. because everyone's symptoms are gonna be different and look different, so you had to manage it based on your life, mm -hmm. not somebody else's. So yeah, abandonment is tough, but yeah. yeah. It's also not about like kicking that part of you out. Right? Yeah. Because that part of you that's really worried that somebody's leaving is there for a reason and it protected you mm -hmm. for a long time and it did a really good job. Mm -hmm. And so part of our job in therapy and as you work through this is giving that part of you new tools and mm -hmm. giving that part of you a, like a lot of comfort and reassurance. Yeah, I actually like say, look at your feelings as information. Mm -hmm. What is this feeling trying to tell me? Maybe if I feel like they're going to leave the relationship and I'm saying, AKA leave me, mm -hmm. right? Cause mm -hmm. when someone leaves a relationship, we always go, Oh no, they're leaving me. Mm -hmm. Right? So if I could be like, okay, I feel some kind of way about that, but what is the information going to tell me? Mm -hmm. Like, well, we've been arguing for a lot. Maybe we haven't been seeing eye to eye. Maybe we just outgrew each other or maybe we, we realized we had too many differences. If you start looking at your feelings as information, it could tell you a lot. And then you can explore and see what you like and what you don't like and grow as a human being. Yeah. So back on trauma response. No, like taking this and taking a little bit of a left turn, mm -hmm. how does these type of trauma responses and this type of rumination differ from general anxiety or daily life kind of Worry. See, I think that it could be, it's not one or the other. Mm. It could be, it's like onion, mm -hmm. right? There's layers. It's, it mimics anxiety. It mimics depression. Um, it mimics, I'm just having a bad fucking day. Mm -hmm. Like, until you could sit down and process the events that led up to that moment, mm -hmm. That's sometimes the only way you can see it. Mm -hmm. Then there are other times you can see clear as day because it's happened before. Yeah. And you know it. Mm -hmm. So, um, hmm. If I had to really think about it. Yeah, I'm sticking to my answer. It's, yeah. it's, it's layers. Yeah. We're not like these, like. We're not compartmentalized. No. No. We're not Ikea cubes. Mm -hmm. Like everything is kind of melted We're not Tetris. Together. Tetris. Tetris. <laughs> there, there Tetris. We are um, multifaceted. Mm -hmm. um, we are complex, but also simple. Yeah. At the There's, same time. And like if anxiety about something then triggers the trauma response and leads into the trauma response, it also can go the other way. Yeah. Right? And so mm -hmm. if you're working through a trauma response and trying to figure out, okay, what are some tools that I can use to get out of it? leaning on anxiety to help mm -hmm. pull you out of the trauma response could also be an option. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because sometimes our trauma response is an indication that we're making a breakthrough mm -hmm. in our treatment or what we're working mm -hmm. on. And so how what that looks like, if you know anyone who's in therapy, they might be extra irritable. They might <laughs> don't want to talk to people. Mm -hmm. They might be what you might say in a mood or in a funk. The brain is trying to process everything mm -hmm. that they made a breakthrough in therapy and they're still processing it. Yes, they process with the therapist, but long after you leave us, sometimes we say to you, things might still come up. Mm -hmm. 
And that's where the emergency call can come in if you need to reconnect with the therapist, if you're struggling. If not, you can wait till the next session, which is the following week. But I always say give yourself space because not all trauma responses is a really bad thing. It's also growth. It's also, I learned something new about me and maybe this truth I can't really handle right now. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a heavy truth about me and I can't handle it right now. Give yourself some space. Um, yeah. Yeah, especially at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like at the beginning, when you're first starting to realize that this is what's part, part of what's happening for you is you're getting stuck in these trauma cycles mm -hmm. is just being kind to yourself as you go through it and try and recognize as much as it's happening mm -hmm. and then work with your therapist and, and work with your support system to help find tools to move past it. I don't like that language, but I, yeah, I mean, that's, it's good for now. Yeah. Like I move past it, meaning like you're still giving yourself like moving past the blame. Mm -hmm. I would say thank you more so absolutely <laughs> oh and it's also common that trauma responses can come out as anger mm -hmm. especially towards your therapist mm -hmm. <laughs> how dare you make me feel these feelings <laughs> <laughs> i mean we can handle it yeah just just want to preference that that that's what we're here for we yeah. hold for you we help you process but we also hold for you mm -hmm. so that it doesn't feel so heavy mm -hmm. for you to walk around with yeah, anger is my favorite emotion. Mm. I, lo I love anger. Anger is like action and it's vocal and it lets you know what's happening. And so anger in the therapy room is a great tool and it's it lets you know that you're ready to like make a big move. Mm -hmm. um, and so bring that in and we're, we're ready, we're here. We're oh yeah, as it. an art therapist, I encourage angry art all mm -hmm. the time. I get clients go, what? I've never... <laughs> heard of what is that <laughs> like <laughs> oh let's do it like it's a great way to process safely on paper mm -hmm. your anger mm -hmm. and also verbally mm -hmm. but nonverbal is a good way to deal with it too absolutely like yeah. i almost wish that we had uh extra room around here where we can smash uh ceramics oh it's coming <laughs> OSTC point two or two point oh is yeah, it's, it's coming. It's coming. Oh yeah. <laughs> what are so talking with your therapist, giving yourself some grace when you're seeing it, getting it like out on paper, allowing for anger in safe spaces as mm -hmm. much as possible. What are some other healthy ways to recognize it, work with it, try and comfort it? Mm. I think the more attuned you are with yourself is going to help you recognize it, but you have to give yourself time. Mm. Nothing is going to be obvious like overnight. It's not, okay, I've been seeing you for three weeks and we have processed my trauma responses. <laughs> I'm cured. No, that ain't it. I mean, I, even when I think about this topic, we might have to do a part two I'm and a part three because sure we will. there's so many parts to trauma responses that I can't really think of all of them right now, but mm -hmm. I know if I sit like after we leave, mm -hmm. I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I should have mentioned this mm -hmm. and I should mention that. But yeah, definitely. That's why you can't put a limit on therapy, yeah. right? I mean, you should try not to. You make goals with mm -hmm. your therapist and you're going to revisit them. But when it comes to addressing trauma mm -hmm. and how it looks, when it comes out as trauma response or triggers or PTSD or um, rumination, like it, it comes out in all different formats. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I wouldn't wanna, I think attunement is the closest, being aware, yeah. that's what I mean, attunement. Being self-aware and journaling i'm mm -hmm. a big fan yeah. of that because that's when you can identify patterns of behavior <laughs> and then you can talk about it and say hey i noticed that i've been doing this is this trauma response is what is this behavior because i notice i do this a mm -hmm. lot mm -hmm. so that's another way because yeah. like i said trauma response looks different for everyone it does mm -hmm. um and even recognizing that like familiar feeling or when x happens i respond to this mm -hmm. and looking for patterns um, how, how do you 
get friends and family involved. Because part of the work, especially at the beginning, is noticing that is happening, being kind to yourself, mm -hmm. and then starting to figure out as much as you can when it starts, which mm -hmm. often is like, it you're, happens after. You're mm -hmm. like, oh shit, I think that was just a trauma response. And then sometimes you can kind of catch it somewhere towards the end and mm -hmm. then somewhere towards the middle. And the goal is to kind of catch it towards the beginning. How do you get friends and family involved? I think the first step would be identifying your triggers mm -hmm. and sharing that with the family. Mm -hmm. Hey. I get really triggered by, whether it's from a PTSD that you've developed or it's based on your trauma, I would start with triggers. Mm -hmm. I get triggered with loud noises. I get triggered if you walk up behind me and just touch me on my shoulder. Um, if you share the triggers that you have with your family, they can be mindful. Mm -hmm. um, you're not asking them to walk on eggshells. You're just letting them know that if I excuse myself in the room, it's probably because I'm self-regulated. Mm -hmm. And they will recognize it too. Mm -hmm. um, and the trauma responses, once you start identifying them with a therapist, then you can start sharing. So identify your triggers, share that with your family. As you are making progress in your therapy, you don't have to share everything with your family about the like details of your process in therapy, but you could be like, hey, in therapy, I noticed that when I tend to be snippy and snappy right after therapy, mm -hmm. I'm usually going through a trauma response because I might have made a breakthrough. I might have been aware of something I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. um, or just emotionally exhausted. And then emotionally exhausted. And there's such a thing as therapy fatigue. Oh, totally. And that happens at different times. So, yeah, I would yeah. say communication. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, just keep track of how vulnerable you feel mm -hmm. with your communication. Mm -hmm. Don't share too much where you feel like, oh, my gosh, I just expose all myself to my family and they're going to judge me. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't want that feeling mm -hmm. and you can talk with your therapist of like, okay, how can I communicate what we mm -hmm. figured out today with my family? Mm -hmm. Because they're going to want to, they're, they're caring and they want to know how to help me mm -hmm. and you'll learn boundaries. Yeah. 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 And family and friends and partners are all human too and have their own thing. And so you got to mm -hmm. figure out which, which person you can lean on for what type of mm -hmm. support. And it's good to ask them to, mm -hmm. hey, I've had a really rough session in therapy. Can I just probably just sit next to you, not talk, but I just need to sit next to you? Mm -hmm. And because nonverbal communication can feel just as heavy for the person mm -hmm. who loves you. And, you know, asking them gives them the opportunity to be like, hey, I had a really rough day. Can we do this later? Or I'd like to be there for you, but right now is not a good time. You give them the opportunity to set their boundaries mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a really good point. Expecting yeah. friends and family to be able to be there all of the time isn't realistic because yeah. they're also going to have their life and their things going on. And at the same time, I don't want you to feel bad if you just... Because <laughs> I just had a flashback yeah, yeah. of me calling my friends and I'm like... Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I don't want you to feel bad about that because no. they love you and they want to be there for you. But I think getting in the habit of asking if someone is in a mental space to be there for you is good because you're also setting boundaries for them mm -hmm. to do for you. Mm -hmm. So boundaries is really about what you set for yourself, not necessarily for others. So yeah. Yeah. And doing things like I've had clients that like with partners have been able to say like, hey, I'm realizing that I get really insecure um, and I'm working on that voice in my head. So can I come to you and just be like, hey, I'm feeling really insecure right now. Can you tell me that you love me? Mm -hmm. And then it cues a partner into, it's not about something the partner did and it keeps you out of like this defensive oh, yeah. like argument mode and just lets the partner know, oh, hey, somebody I care about is going through a thing and it's an easy thing for me to be like, oh, you're the best, God. I love you so much. You know, and yeah. it builds intimacy and it just, it helps heal that inner child mm -hmm. that we all have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think we should definitely do a part two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, we're just talking about like abandonment. There yeah. this can be we just so many touching the, the Yeah. Several parts. Mm -hmm. We're just touching the tip of the iceberg as they say. Absolutely. I don't know why I because <laughs> you're on top of the iceberg. <laughs> I'm on top of the world. <laughs> um, 
Well, this being just kind of a, a general once over and kind of introing mm -hmm. what a trauma response is, do you think there's there's anything we're missing or that would be important takeaway for today? Mm, we would love to hear. Yeah. Email point. us. Let us know what part of this podcast resonated with you. If there is a topic you would like to know, if it's trauma response, that would be great because mm -hmm. then we, we know exactly what example to continue talking with and you don't have to wait a very long time. Mm -hmm. So that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. If whatever you want to hear about, um, especially around trauma responses or around what's coming up for you, we we're happy to talk about that. Yeah. And maybe one of our topics could be like, how do we identify triggers without it coming across like micromanaging other people's mm -hmm. behavior? Mm -hmm. Cause that's important too. It is. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Again, you can e email us at info at openspacetherapycollective.com and we look forward to seeing you next week. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's topic. Leave a comment below or email us at communications at Open Space Therapy Collective. You can follow us on all of the social medias. And if you're in California looking for a therapist, visit our website at openspacetherapycollective.com and book a free intro call with one of our therapists to see if we are the right fit for you. My Therapist is Out is an Open Space Therapy Collective podcast. Our therapists are Kristen Crow, Debbie White, and Renee Johnson. Clinical Consultant, Jenny Nigro. Communications Coordinator, Riley Andreessen. Marketing Consultant, M. Issa Messaging. Administrative Assistant, Mirza Ruiz. And our podcast editing is done by Smash and Grab Studio.